Hi everybody, English Bob here. Welcome to today's video. Today's video is entitled Windows 12 Killer. It could also be Windows 10, Windows 11 Killer. Windows Killer actually would have sufficed. However, next year, 2024, we're currently in November of 2023. Microsoft are going to return to their three to four year release cycle of their operating systems now we all know that windows 10 and especially windows 11 is absolutely chock full of screenshotters key loggers telemetry spyware you fucking name it microsoft windows has it the other thing that you've also got to bear in mind is that all of these processes use up hardware system resources resources that you should be using also, any Microsoft operating system is never going to be yours. You only agree to a license to run it on your computer and let Microsoft take off of it whatever the fuck they want. Well, big drum roll. Here we go with MX Linux 23.1, my personal saviour. This has allowed me to flawlessly and seamlessly dump Microsoft Windows both 10 and 11, migrate over onto Linux for all my daily computing needs. It's even allowed me to do it on a PC that's half the specification of my normal gaming PC. Why is that? Because all the hardware resources are mine. MX Linux 23.1 AHS edition is 100% free of charge. All you've got to do is get off your arse, download the ISO, burn it to a USB thumb drive, back your Windows shit up, and install it onto your PC. You're done, you'll never look back. I've installed a selection of the games that I love to play and enjoy, and the experience is more or less 100% Windows-esque, so nothing new there to learn. Most people don't give a shit about the operating systems because all they do is load the games up or load their applications up and play them. In November 2023, with most applications being available in the cloud and most Windows only games like Fortnite, like League of Legends, etc., being available via GeForce Now, there has never ever been a better time to get the normie, the ordinary, average, everyday, run of the mill, ho hum fucking lemon off of Windows and onto Linux. And that is what this video is aimed at. If I can do it, you can do it. It's as simple as that. No need to learn anything new and complex. No need to touch the terminal. Those wonderful people over at MX Linux provide you with, um, excuse me, a whole bunch of useful point and click tools to get your shit done. MX Linux is also built and based off of Debian, which will mean nothing to 99.999% of people who watch this video. Uh, nevertheless, in simple English, it will outlast your hardware. It's that reliable. With regard to all the Microsoft Windows shit, don't just take my word for it. There's a fantastic channel on YouTube. Oh, I've got to find the fucker now. Uh, and I'll put a shortcut link underneath this video to um, that channel. And some of the stuff that this guy does is scary as all fuck. So I'm just going to, for the remainder of this video, let this video play. He's basically comparing Windows 11 to Windows XP. He's using a utility called Wireshark to see what a virgin install of Windows 11 does when it's booted up. No web browser, no applications, no games, just the fucking operating system. If this doesn't scare the shit out of the average everyday run-of-the-mill ho-hum ordinary computer user and give you the leverage you need to make the jump onto MX Linux, then to be honest, we're a lost cause. We're fucked. Enjoy. About telemetry. We've heard that Microsoft or Windows collects your data, sells it to advertising companies, spies on you, all of that. But what exactly is happening when you buy a brand new laptop
up and open it for the first time. That is what we're going to look at today. And for a bit of fun, we're going to compare it to Windows XP and see what has changed in computing in over a decade. So to start off, I've got a Wireshark capture. This is a static capture from a brand new laptop. It's not a live capture of this system, just so you understand. This is a clean laptop with absolutely nothing installed being run for the first time. We've filtered it by DNS protocol, so it's going to show us the exact names of the sites that's making queries to, the addresses it's trying to resolve. So let's find out who's spying on us. First of all, we've got store images, Microsoft.com. Okay, maybe they need to download some images, right? Then we've got uh, an Akamai standard query. If you don't know, Akamai is a CDN, which means they're a content delivery network. So I'm going to give this a pass as well. We've got DigiCert, Certifications Authority, WPAD, which basically stands for Web Proxy Auto Discovery. It's not really real traffic, but as you can see, the list is long, so let's keep going. Now we are seeing Steam Cloud, London Storage, Google APIs. Okay, but if we keep going, it gets progressively worse. So now there's geo.prod.do.microsoft.com. So I guess that's geolocation tracking. Now we're seeing even third-party sites trustedsource.org. That sounds like a nice place, trusted source. Let's figure out what trusted source is exactly. Ah, turns out this is a website of McAfee. We've got events.data.microsoft.com, msn.com, and now another one, scorecard research. That sounds really nice. Let's see what the score is. Ah, you block origin blocks it, of course, because it's on an ad and tracking server list. Let's go ahead and proceed. They have a very nice web page, you know, for a company that every person on the planet who's buying a new Windows computer is going to. It's good to know all that advertising money is going towards the web developers. So Scorecard Research, a service of full circle studies, INC, is part of Comscore, market research community, a leading global market research effort that studies and reports on internet trends and behavior. They have a very nice descriptive web page. Look at their contact form. This looks like the days of XP. Well, we'll see what the days of XP were actually like. We've got arc.msn.com, assets.msn.com. Now we're seeing Bing as well, even though, again, I haven't conducted a search or anything like that. But of course, there's smartscreen.microsoft.com because, of course, we need like five different URL filters each sending traffic so they can make sure the actual URL that I'm not visiting is safe. Think about it for a second. This is a computer where the user has not opened a web browser. They haven't typed in anything. They're not trying to use the internet even. All of this is just what the machine is doing on its own without asking the user. And then it gets better. Privacy portal, don't want trust.com. Remember 1984, where there's the Ministry of Truth that creates the propaganda and the lies? 2023 is just like that. If you hear the word privacy online anywhere, it just means we're collecting your data. What are you going to do about it? Let's check out privacyportal.onetrust.com. Looks like privacy is not available. <laughs> Make trust your competitive advantage. Wow. So the way to have trust is to have a new machine connect to another company's domain, send them some data as well, so they can ensure that you're doing the right thing with the data that you're collecting. <laughs> now, I could keep going all day, but I think you get the point. And I know what you're thinking. You're being silly. You have all these amazing services running on your system. You got to have Windows updates. You need to keep your system up to date. Being a security person, I should know. But hold that thought. Let's take a look at a different system. So this is Windows XP Professional 64-bit edition. Again, brand new install. And let's see what traffic we have on here. So I'm going to set up some filters. We're basically going to do the same thing. So we're going to look at DNS traffic and let's see what we find. This, by the way, is a live capture, which means it's capturing everything that's happening on the system right now. First of all, I notice we don't even have enough DNS queries. So it's showing us MDNS. Let's look at the first real traffic we have. Guess what? It's download.windowsupdate.com. Does that sound a bit different? Does that feel a bit different? in terms of the transparency, in terms of what you think is happening on your system. Let's look at the next DNS query. We have update.microsoft.com. And then we've got the responses from both of those queries. 
but let's keep going. Let's see what else we find. There's absolutely no other servers that this computer is connecting to. No MSN, no Bing, no Google, nothing. And guess what? We still have Windows updates. We still had a mechanism for the operating system to communicate with their servers, download new software if it needed to. Now playing on Microsoft's side for a moment here. So I think you get the idea. In November 2023, you would have to be some kind of special weird New York sandwich to still use one of the proprietary operating systems as your daily driver. Take my advice, have a crack at MX Linux. Please post underneath this video if you absolutely cannot migrate slash upgrade to MX Linux, stating the reason why. Maybe you're using a piece of legacy software, maybe you have hardware compatibility issues. Please, please post them underneath the video. I'd be so interested as to why you, the average everyday run-of-the-mill ho-hum computer user, are unable to migrate to what is, in my opinion, the single best operating system in 2023. Thanks for watching. Please rate, comment, subscribe, thumb the videos up or down. I will see you for another Wicked English Bob video.